Okay, guys, high five. Oh, I missed that one. I'm here at my hotel in Chiang Mai, and I came here to actually see the Queen Sirikit Botanic Gardens with Dr. Piakaset. But he had mentioned that there is an opportunity to potentially see some rare and unusual plants deeper in the forest. So I figured I'd go check them out. So what are we going to do today? Okay, we, we actually we are here at Cool Down. So we're taking the same road up. Oh, these are trusty trucks. Good morning. Nice to see you. Let's make some tracks. <laughs> Very economy. Yeah, exactly. This is a low budget film, you know. We still haven't gotten sponsorship for botanical films. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go, Coco Max. So I heard this is the really good stuff. This is cold pressed, pure coconut water from young coconuts in Thailand. I'm not paid to say this. This is like seriously some of the best coconut water I've ever tasted. It's a little bit like, it's desserty because it's pretty sweet, but it doesn't have anything else other than coconut water in here. Do you guys get sick of coconut water here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's too much of a good thing. Right. We are going to pass one hill tribe village, the Mong tribe called uh, Mesa Mai Mong village. Lots of old people, they yeah. wear their traditional suit, you see? Yeah. Yeah, this is the traditional one, made of bamboo, wood, and things like that. Oh, little chicken. Hi, chicken. Hi. After the village, of course, um, it's quite, it, it's get into the national park site again yeah. and it, it's quite muddy. So we still need a toby drive. Okay. Whoops. The bottom of the truck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was also the bottom of the truck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The bottom of the truck. Oh, yikes. <laughs> We're trying to uh, search for the sapria. It used to be reported here, but I, I haven't heard about it for quite uh, some long time. time. Yeah, yeah some so time. we're gonna see if it's still there. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Now you may have heard of the Rafflesia, which is the largest flower in the world and also a member of the Rafflesiaceae family. So unfortunately, we're not going to see that one today, but we are going to try to find its smaller cousin, the Sapria, which is a member of a different genus. We have to actually go up in elevation because that's uh, where, above yeah, meters. above a thousand meters. Uh, that's the natural habitats of the Sapria. They normally grow above 1,000 meters. Okay, this uh, area used to be a big population of, of the Sapria. It's looked like uh, never been touched by fire before, but actually we, we lost some, some diversity here. So then basically when you said they, some of the locals actually started the fire here yes. and it destroyed the forest. Yeah, we, we can walk up a little bit and okay. try to find them. Oh, here, you can see the dead tetra sigma. Here. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you can see it's dead because it has yeah, all these mushrooms dead. growing yes, on it this too. This one also. Oh man. Yes, already gone. Yeah, you see? Oh yeah. It's gone already. That's so sad. I used to see uh, 40, 50, flower buds here. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's such a shame. Well, do you think we could go somewhere where... Yeah, we, we will try to search uh, in the deeper forest. Okay. Ooh, that is a nice one. Yeah, it, it's going to fly away. Okay, well, no, it looks pretty happy right now. It, uh, it pooped on me. Yeah. What is this? I think it's a group of eggs of the mantis. Contain uh, several hundred Whoa. eggs inside. This is far more open. Yeah, you see the big trees of Pinascasia here. You see some of the trees get burned here. People collect the sap. You can see here people set the fire up here, and then you get the sap oh, running yeah. down here. And sometimes, if you if if the local repeat it many 
many times. Yeah. It's you get thinner, thinner, and then when the strong wind comes, it's... It just topples over. Yeah, it's a breakdown. Oh, that's a shame. Yes. And this is about 80 years old. So do, you th so do you think burning is like the biggest issue that you have here with habitat? Right, and collecting the, the, the sap, sap. Off, off the trees also, yeah. yes. People they use uh, as a fuel for the lamp or, yeah. yes. So I'm walking through the primary pine forest here. And what we have to do is actually get to the other side to the montane forest in order to potentially see some sapria. Now, what's interesting about sapria and the other members of the Rafflesiaceae family is that they are holoparasites, which means that they rely entirely on a host plant for its nutrients and other aspects. So, for instance, carbon nitrogen is being taken from their host plant. So essentially, this host plant is acting like a sugar daddy, quite literally, because it's getting all its sugars from there. So who is the sugar daddy of the sapria plant? the tetrastigma vine, and that's what we're going to be looking out for. That's our native uh, cycads. Oh, wow, yes. okay, cool. Not many cycads to go around. Hold on to those. It's like cat's microlitiae. Mm. Look at that caterpillar. This oh, is wow. the dang dangerous one, quite uh, itchy. Oh. 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 So you don't want to touch that one. I'll touch it with my thumbnail. I'm petting you with my thumbnail. Why do you like that, huh? So we saw that there's a specific bat species that actually uses this palm as like a home. So they pull down the tree leaves to create this rooftop but there's a secondary home that there's no bats in here, but this one seems to have been used by a bird to build its bird's nest in it. So Mr. Medi says that we are about 100 meters away from where he thinks that there might be some sapria. So hopefully after the disappointment of the first place that we saw, we'll be able to see some sapria in the second place. Now we're getting pretty dark and deep into this forest. This is the primary forest here in Thailand, which means it's the original forest. It hasn't been cut down. And that's the places where we need to actually go in order to find the sapria because it doesn't grow in secondary forests. It only grows in primary forests. So the tetrastigma vine is the host plant for the sapria. And we could see some here, but he said still no, still no sapria to be found. It's belonged to the grape family. The tetra sigma. You're, you're reaching the banana forest here. Yeah. And that means we are get, getting close to the stream. I hear and the uh, stream down there. Yeah, and it, uh, you can hear the stream down there. Yeah. yeah and the, the sapria grow only on the stigma that grow next to the stream. And down there you can see the banana grow along the, the stream. This is why banana called Musa itinerans. So this is the one that actually travels along yes, the, the rhizome. Yes, it's not grow in the dense clump. Why Tetra Sigma, the big one? Oh, this is a huge, huge wine of tet Tetra Sigma. Should be quite old, this one. So, so we are still, getting closer. And is this still alive? Yes, it's still okay, alive. Okay, wow, it's, it, yes. it is big. You see how, how large? Yeah. Yeah, maybe more than 50 years old, this one. Wow. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for these. So we're gonna climb up this rock face right here. Hopefully it's not too slippery, but we're gonna try to make our way up through this path because Mr. Betty said that there are some tetrastigma up here and it's a good chance that we'll actually see some sapria. I'm trying to uh, get up and use, uh, I wonder if uh, this tree will hold me. What's this on my, oh, I think I got a leech on me. Huh? I think I got a leech. You can feel that. Yeah, it's in my armpit. I was like, what is this thing? It's not yet, yet sucking. Yeah. <laughs> this was in, in my armpit, this leech right here. You guys warned me about these guys. Yes, yes. Oh my God, that's so creepy. It's amazing how it gets so long and then also so short. It looks like a little when slug it and then- your blood, it can be five times larger than <sighs> this. Now I'm like a little, yeah. little like paranoid. I kind of feel something on me everywhere. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> They're searching for a good, it's of mine also, see? You see, touching, it's, Yeah, it's touching, touching it out. Touching, shake. Oh, it's got the vein. Shake, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's... 
Oh, yeah. Uh, it probably wants something a little bit more fleshy. This guy's a martyr. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, there are two. Oh, cool. Two and, two of and, them. and one die. Still young. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is this an aborted bud? Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay, so these aren't opened yet, though. Yeah, this is still still small. Wow. Yeah, it can be uh, much larger than, yeah. than this one. Try so, to try to search more around, I think. Let's try to go ahead. This is for all the climber route. Yeah, oh, so you have to follow yeah. where the climber... The route goes like... Oh, oh, oh. more! Oh, right oh, there, see, right there! there more! Oh, here. Yeah. Okay, more. wow, wow, wow. Wow! So this is basically this on the root of the yeah. tetrastigma. Yes, right. Wow. Right. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's there's two more right here. Yeah, yeah. One and two. One, two. And another third one right here. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Plenty. So is this the, this is the tetrastigma this, root? Yes, the tetrastigma root. Uh, uh, clam, cramber, and root following like this. When uh -huh. we observe, and this is the line for permanent for last, last year. Okay. By the student from Chiang Mai University. Oh, look, at, there's a little one right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, oh, oh wow. this one. Yeah. yeah. You can open the soil. Wow, oh, they're just like, they yeah. just follow oh. the root everywhere. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. And this cool. following, you will observe this. Yeah. Here's one too that I just yeah. see under your. Yeah. Yeah, and then this is another yeah. aborted yeah, bud. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, super cool. They're everywhere along yeah. this route. I think you you follow my footprint. Okay. Oh, I found it's... Oh, wow! Yeah, oh, it's blooming! Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> blooming, so cool! Blooming. Oh, and here. That's oh, wow! so cool. Yes, it's uh, Oh, blooming. it's open! Yeah, Oh, my open. God. Oh, look at that! How beautiful! Wow! Oh, we are quite lucky. Wow, how long, how long do you think this has been opened? I think maybe three, four days. Yeah. Maybe three, four days. Wow, it's so cool. Yes. Will we be able to smell it? Yeah, sure. Okay. You can try. You can try. You can try. I mean, come you, on. I came you, all this you, way. You will impression. <laughs> I want my, this is a first impression. It's your first impression. Oh. Oop, careful. Okay, that's not so bad. <laughs> I think the durian is actually worse. <laughs> <laughs> smell? Yeah, it's not that bad. You know, I've, I've smelled worse. You, you see here, it uh, belongs to the same family with uh, Raffersia. Yeah. But, but it has, uh, instead of five tepal, we, we call sepal and, and uh, petal yeah. together, we call it uh, tepal. It had ten instead of five. Yeah, in, one, two, in, three. In, yes. Nine, ten, yep. Yes. So those are the lobes that come off that are not quite petal-like. Right. And, um, and then the, the smell that's kind of emanating from here, which... I don't think is as bad, but it smells a little, you know, musty and and corpsey. That yes. attracts the flies to actually pollinate this right, one. Right, right, right. How can you tell if it's a male or female? It's quite uh, difficult because actually you, we have to cut cut down and see see their uh, stick mouth enter oh, inside. Okay. You know? Okay. So we wouldn't want to do that, obviously, because right, these are just right. so precious. Right. I just, I mean, this is amazing. Just like the the form of it, it just. So this has no chlorophyll whatsoever. It's no completely reliant yes, on its yes. on its host. Yes. And it's this is the tetra sigma. So how does wine. it how does it actually implant itself on the vine? I'm not quite sure. Someone said the seeds might be uh, uh, squeeze. Uh, on the, the wine mm -hmm. itself by the wine animal, like uh -huh. wine boar, uh, something like that. But right. I, I, it's still a mis mystery that uh, how the seeds can get injected to the host plant. Right. I mean, I, I learned that there's like a, something called the hastoria that kind of penetrates the xylem and the phloem of the tetrastigma vine. But does that happen when it's a seed or after, like afterwards? That's the, I guess that's the big question. And then, um, and then, uh, just out of, out of curiosity, do we know what came first, the tetrastigma vine or the parasite? Okay, from the paper, it's both from uh, Cretaceous uh, period, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't, I don't know uh, <laughs> which one come first. Yeah, yes, we can't, yes, we that's can't still determine. a uh, question. There's an interesting thing, though, that uh, I, was, I was reading also uh, a paper that came out about how horizontal gene transfer so basically how it borrows genes from another species and in this case 
this species, which is Tetrastigma, they have actually found some of the, the genome of Tetrastigma in here. And in a way, it makes it feel a little bit more phylogenically closely related right, and right, linked right. because it is so reliant. Like symbiosis. So, yeah, yes. you know, symbiosis. But in yes. this case, yes, parasitism. Yes, it's, it's a parasitism. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's so cool. And if you look at that, yeah. here it's a fruit of Tetrastigma. The fruit here look like grapes, but yeah. they're brown. But brown, brown and not edible. Yes, this one. Wow. So this is like a really good way to keep your eyes peeled for the tetrastigma vine kind of up in the canopy. And then you have to look down in order to be able to find, you know, this particular species of sapria. What kind of species of sapria is this? Himalayana. Himalayana. Yes. Okay. And then what type of tetrastigma vine is it on? Because it, it, it specializes in a specific species of tetrastigma? Yes, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the species name, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's specific to the species also. Right. Yes. Okay, so let's let's go up further and yeah, be careful. Don't step not on step on any of the uh, the little buds because they are probably sensitive. Yeah, let's search for some more. Hey guys, so we didn't see any more flowering sapria up there, but we did see that one, which is amazing because I've never seen anything like that, and it's just so cool to be here in Thailand and just be able to go out into the woods and actually experience this. So if you like these excursions, let me know and let me know where you'd like to see me go next because these are just so rad to be able to see the plants growing in the wild. And if you like this channel and you wanna support, then feel free to plant your finger on that subscribe button and you can follow along on my personal journey on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. See you guys next week. And if you'd like to read how to bring plants into your life to have a deeper connection to yourself, your community, and the world around you, then check out my latest book, How to Make a Plant Love You, Cultivate Green Space in Your Home and Heart, available in bookstores and online worldwide. And don't forget to check out the Houseplant Masterclass, the first online audiovisual course covering houseplant care, cultivation, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com. Oh, shit. here it is. <laughs> wow. Oh, that one's Big definitely fat one. That one's definitely been gorging on me. Okay, I'm going to give that one to you. <laughs> you see it's it's oh, uh, five or six times larger than than before. You uh, see? This is uh, full of blood. Yeah. Full of blood. And and after this they they were trying to seek the 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 suit <laughs> Uh, area to lay their eggs. Oh my god, yes. I am so never going to pee in the woods again. <laughs> <laughs>